Uh, hello, folks, to uh, our first quarantine show of the Sin Beef Podcast. Uh, um, a mini episode. It's, it's a review uh, of, of one film. Uh, I've been teasing this Bakshi thing since I've started the show. I know uh, you've been foaming at the mouth for people. Pro- probably not, though. But um, I- I'm happy to kick it off with... Uh, so he's been on the show before it was on the last show you heard, probably. Uh, Cameron Scott's here. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great today, man. feel pretty good for once. I would I'd complain, but, you know, nobody listened. Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> doing all right out there in quarantine land? It's, it's, it's going okay. You know, people are not being too ignorant, so I'm uh, I'm going to go with that. And Ooh, tomorrow the, the Indiana lockdown starts, so... I've seen, yeah, it's it's no big deal. I'm not gonna talk, I'm not gonna talk about that right now. <laughs> uh, a, yeah, it's on everybody's minds, but you know. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is on everybody's mind. It is. It's a very big thing. But um, tonight we're gonna start with uh, Mr. Bakshi's first uh, foray into feature films, uh, Fritz the Cat from 1972. It's uh, an X-rated film by the Motion Picture Association of America. Um, there we go. Your cheap up lot synopsis is this. A hypocritical, swinging college student cat raises hell in, in, the, in a satiric vision of various elements of the 1960s. Um, this, of course, is directed by Ralph, Ralph Bakshi. Written um, by him as well, the screenplay, and come from characters by Mr. Robert Crumb. And um, this... Uh, was the first time in a long time for me. I haven't seen this probably since I was like 14 years old. And, um... About the same here. <laughs> so, we're, we're, we're right back in this world again to say, hey, let's, uh, <laughs> let's watch this film and, uh, see what this X-rated, um, sort of revolutionary film, because there's a lot of, there's a lot of big themes in this movie, which I didn't expect watching from when I was a kid. I just knew... As at fourteen years old, this was an X-rated cartoon, and there, there's animals fucking in this movie for sure, you know, and fucking cartoon <laughs> animated dicks. But um, I'm gonna yeah. kick it off with uh, Cameron and ask him, uh, what does he make of Fritz the Cat? You know, uh, much like you, I hadn't seen it probably since I was young. I don't know, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And let's face it, you know, nobody at the 12 years old should probably see this film. (laughs) You should probably be a little older. I I remember trying to sneak it out. I mean, I was born in 76, so I think I I saw it first time around 81, 82. It was like on SpectreVision or on TV, one of those early day cable stations. And I remember sneaking just to watch it late at night when my parents were asleep. And I got my shit in a lot of trouble over that. <laughs> they did not want me seeing this. And having revisited it as an adult, I can understand why. I definitely understand where the X rating comes from. I mean, like you said, there's, there's animated uh, genitalia. There, there's hardcore drug usage, <laughs> the language. But, I, I, you know, I know it's a controversial film these days, you know, especially in, in this generation. But I love it. I, I love the satirical attitude of it it's an obviously a movie that would never be made today never no, and and that, and that kind of in, in lies the beauty of it uh it's kind of like blazing saddles it's brazen it's fucking unapologetic and very real uh i kind of studied up on it a, a bit after watching it again and kind of like learned about the making of it you know and how they recorded a lot of the what do you want to call it, like incidental dialogue you know, background stuff was really just recording people in parks and in bars and getting very real conversation, which I thought was, uh, as a filmmaker myself, was just amazing. But, you know, uh, it was a movie that, that always spelled trouble for me because I just remember getting into trouble for having to watch, having watched it in the first place. Makes, you know, I mean, it, it makes heavy metal look like fucking Mother Goose. And it's funny as hell. And I mean, I'll be quite honest. If that's wrong, I don't want to be right. Uh, I did notice one little thing that I had to rewind and watch twice. Um, I don't know if you noticed this, but in the riot scene, did you notice the jab they took at Disney? No, I have to watch. I, I watched it twice for the show, and I, I have to go look for that now, just just to see what was it, man. It, it was just it was an outline when they're getting ready to drop the napalm. They're getting ready to drop the bomb on the city. 
there's a, a shot of uh, just a silhouette of Mickey and Minnie Mouse watching. Oh, I, wow. I think like Donald Duck might have been there too, but I knew I, I kept it was such a quick shot, but it was definitely the, the two mouses. The well, they couldn't, they couldn't linger on it, obviously. It would be in a lot of trouble that way. So, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, but uh, you know what I mean? It's, it's you know, a lot of people would call this movie exploitation, but I would call it, it like they explore things, they don't, but they don't exploit them. The, uh, the subject matter and whatnot, the sex, the violence, the drugs. It was just a, I mean, to be quite honest, that was the life in the, the mid to late 60s. And, you know, Bakshi, uh, or however you pronounce his name, Bakshi? 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 I think so, yeah. Uh, I'm horrible with names. I've heard it both ways. Bakshi or Bakshi, I've heard it both ways. But uh, he, he was just, you know, once I saw his his, uh, his uh, filmography and I realized some of the other things he had done and all that I liked, like Wizard, Lord of the Rings and Cool World, Fire and Ice, you know, he was really prolific. I mean, for this being his first film, he really moved on to do a lot of a lot of cool shit, but yeah, uh, that's my yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, but that's my 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 full take on it. No, oh, cool. No, I, I thought it was really interesting to read about you know uh, Bakshi's backstory about where he came from, and he was born in Brooklyn. So you see a lot of like New York City, like it, it, how it would look in the '60s, like the slums and like the really shitty neighborhoods, the real wild out neighborhoods, and uh. A lot, a lot of it done like, like almost like matte, like matte paintings and w- with stuff over overlaying over them. So really, it would look really cheap nowadays. But I think that it works really well. And there's even a part in the bar where the, where he goes, he goes to Harlem and goes to go hang out with the crows. Again, very racist to some people. But if you read up on them, um, they move from 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 Brooklyn to Washington when he was very young, and he he hung out with a lot of black kids. And that's all that was in his neighborhood. So he really fought against, even at a young age, segregation. I mean, you know, he was he was against you know, you know, separating the blacks from the whites because that's all he lived, that's all he knew. So they eventually left and went back to New York City, where he became a cartoonist. But um, I thought that it really showed in the movie, you know, his his feel for that. Like, although it was very cartoonish and it was very overblown, that '60s culture. Because essentially, you got a movie here where you got a degenerate college student, you know, early twenties douchebag, who's like, <clears throat> like the life of the party. Basically, he, he he likes to get high. He likes to fuck. Obviously, yeah, he's the party animal. He's the party literally. animal, li- literally. Yes, and he likes to hang out with a lot of a lot of like minded people like that. Obviously, but again, some of his friends are are uh, are in school too. So. When you know Ralph takes too, too too far, they're obviously pissed off. They actually have one scene where he shows up back at I guess whatever apartment they live in, and they're just trying to study, just staring at him all in disgust after what he <laughs> done last yeah. night. You know, <laughs> like we can't believe this shit you did yesterday. <laughs> it's like it took it too far, Fritz. You know, never mind. We had this giant orgy in a bathtub, which you know I don't I don't know how many. How much fucking could happen to that bathtub with that giant pile? But uh, it's it was a giant pile of um of, of creatures, of, of just you know arms and legs and just shooting in every direction. If if it was even possible, it would not have been comfortable. <laughs> I forget the line, <laughs> but uh, she's sitting on the floor. One of the girls is sitting on the floor with with a with a, with, a, with a, one of the creatures. He goes. You ever had sex with an aardvark? We're a rare breed, you know. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was trying so hard. The aardvark is uh, what the kids would say today was thirsty. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and even even like the pipes that they're smoking the weed out of are like are like cartoony. They look like like um like those bubble pipes you would have as a kid. You know, you blow the bubbles out yeah. and it, it would come out the top of it, and it looked just like that. And everything was you know in. Yeah, that that was great, and essentially, you know, he he, he leaves after b- b- burning his his papers and his books in, in his apartment while he's in the apartment. Again, more 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 matte painting with animation on top. I mean, he he worked in this industry before this. He he did stuff like uh, like the '60s Spider-Man series, the cartoon series. So he was used to doing like really crude animation on top of other animation and. 
but it obviously this is his 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 own thing, obviously. But this turns kind of into like a like the Odyssey in a way because he keeps going to these different cultures and these different things. He goes from after he burns out his apartment to to Harlem looking for his own place in the world, you know, hanging out with his 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 friends, the crows, and then when when he. Uh, <laughs> Unsuccessfully tries to start a revolution after getting high up of like ten J's at once. In uh, <laughs> yeah, when the lady just keeps shoving joint after joint at, at, and down his throat. Oh yeah, <laughs> you ain't black enough, baby. Come on, you know when he's uh he show he shows her his little schmeckle and uh that's uh <laughs> that's a funny scene because he's he's really he's really pounding away on her in one of these scenes and uh yeah it, it, right down to gentrification like uh. Like gentrification, because literally the air force is called in with this 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 riot that Fritz has created, and they 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 nuke they they basically bomb the city uh, and bomb the the Brooklyn they bomb Harlem and and it's it's really extreme and, and it really is. But then again, it leads you on to Fritz's next you know next uh next road uh, d- d- down his quest, I guess, for enlightenment, I guess. Yeah, that would, that'd be safe. Yeah, that's safe to say. Yeah. Again, this is this is a lot a lot of high class stuff we're talking about. This fucking horny ass cat in this movie because he doesn't learn anything in the end. I mean, he goes from there to um. Oh, where is he going next? He, oh, I forgot where he goes next. This is basically like you know, uh, not in the drug sense of a trip, but it's just a, a trip of him going from place to place to place. He finds one of the, he finds one of his fuck buddies, and their car breaks down the desert. So on his way to go find gas, he 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 runs into these anarchists. I guess he, and then they're all about like blowing up the world and whatnot. He's he's tasked to blow up a power plant, and in the end, he he gets blown up with the power plant, but still alive in a hospital and then he learns nothing in the end which is just the way you want to move you want this movie to end because he just has a massive orgy in this hospital room they don't yeah, show this but you, you'd imagine that all this bouncing around led to sex but um <laughs> so but the yeah. same same group of girls that he got at the beginning of the at the movie in the, the bathtub it's the same group that come to, to think he's gonna die and then like nope nope he's not gonna die he's just gonna have an orgy he just learned nothing yeah, I mean, um, this is highly successful. I mean, you got something as as controversial, you know, as, as this. Uh, it's going to make some money because this was a theatrically um, shown film. They made, made a hundred million at the box office in seventy two for an independent animated movie, which probably didn't cost very much to make. I'm going to look that up right now too if it's in here. Uh, oh, it doesn't say. I doubt it cost very much to make because, like I said, it's a lot of it's matte painting with the animation over it. I mean, he knew he knew how to work on a budget. Um, uh, I found it. It was estimated to be about eight hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, so that's a big, big turnaround. And uh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, anything else interesting in here? We're gonna find out right now. Uh, a lot of it's about the rating of the film. Um, the. the I couldn't find any information. I know that at some point they took off the R or the X rating. They took yeah, it down on the DVD yeah. release, and when MGM put it on DVD in two thousand one. Oh boy, yeah. The big the, the big deal with this movie is uh, Robert Crumb uh, created the comic, but they use it without his permission, and uh, so he he wanted his name off the film. So obviously. That happened, and then, um, yeah, it, it, it's really strange why they would do that for, but whatever. <laughs> They're all Larry going up, all kinds of stuff. Um, well, Crumb, you know, brilliant guy, but God, he's he is a crazy individual, mm-hmm. and that's a light way of putting it. He, he crazy, yeah. Um, where we at here? There's some more stuff in here. I know, I know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cork can get kicked into this. The, the, the bumbling cops that show up in this movie—they're uh, actual pigs. And one of them has a particularly funny scene where they crash through a Pentecostal church, and the fucking pig is butt naked with his fucking wanger hanging out. 
<laughs> he gets beat up by the pastor, so yay! But there, there's a lot of like heartbreaking stuff too. Like I mentioned the, the bombing of Harlem, but just before that, you know, somebody that Fritz confided in uh, gets shot and killed by the police, and it's very tragic and very, very, very. Uh, he uses animation. He uses um, like pool balls going into, into the into the, into the, into the holes and. That's it represented, represented his heartbeat. I thought it was quite uh, interesting the, the the way they did that. You know, t- taking the the culture and mixing it into the, this uh, character's death, and um, lots of interesting choices in this film. I think it's a great looking film. I mean, for as for as silly and and as goofy it is, the way that that Bakshi did all this, I thought you know the cheap. I I thought that it it looked great. I mean. But right down to the, the bad stuff, to the part where a bartender, uh, of course, that they're after Fritz calls him boy, you know, um, oh. go, go, goes after to, um, Fritz's buddy who brought him in the bar, br- breaks off a bottle, and you see the, 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 um, the shards sticking out. It looks like colored pencil and kind of shitty, but at that point, I didn't care because everything else was looking pretty good, you know? Yeah, I did notice that with the the color of the bo- bottle was 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 off from mm-hmm. everything else. It was just like kind of sketchy looking. Yeah, I mean, anything else you have to say about the film? I I I have probably tons more stuff to see. But if you haven't seen the film before, we watched the cut that's on Amazon Prime. So it's not the best looking print in the world, but I don't think it has a Blu-ray or anything. So you guys check it out there for sure. So Cameron, anything else, brother? Oh, uh, no. I think we should definitely mention that I had uh, a sequel that was probably just as good. Uh, I wouldn't say it was better than than the original First the Cat, but um, The Nine Lives of First the Cat. I remember that one, too. That one was pretty good. But it, it, as with most sequels, it, something was a little lost there. I don't know if you've ever seen the, the... No, I have to look for it now, though, for sure. I mean, it's it's good. It's a difference between First the Cat, First the Cat is a great movie. Chris the Cat and the Nine Lives of Chris the Cat is just a good movie, if that makes sense. You know, it's it's still, you know, they make for a good duo, makes for a good double feature. But I think if anybody that's especially a fan of any kind of animation probably owes it to themselves to see it. They should, if they have it. Yeah, it's, it's, a, nice, it's a nice mix. And I, it's, 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 um, it's highly political. So if, if somebody else wanted to look it up from a political point of view, you know, amongst the silliness, I, I think that you might really enjoy your experience with Fritz the Cat, you know, besides the animated animal dicks and, you know, him fucking dry, dry humping people and dry basically, humping. With, I'm sorry. <laughs> I said dry humping everything. Was, dry humping every, everything, yeah. It's fucking everybody in this. So, you know, amongst all this political stuff, you have this fucking degenerate who... At the end of at the end of time at the end of the movie, you shouldn't feel sorry for it all because he hasn't learned anything. But he, he's taking you on this this picture of the nineteen sixties, and I, I I think that Bakshi did a real fine job with it. Um, me too, me too. It, it reminds me a lot. You know what it is? It's basically an animated version of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It's, it's very it's very it's very trippy. I mean, there's there's part where. <laughs> I don't know why a girl would do this. Would you invite a girl into a garbage can and she would say yes? Any girl in the world, no matter who it is. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, one, ain't no girl in the world going to meet you in a garbage can or a garbage dumpster or anything like that. And then be like, oh, it's so dirty in here. Yeah, it's a fucking garbage can. <laughs> you know, when, when, in what world, you know, you got to suspend disbelief, especially being an animated film. But, you know, <laughs> like, come on, when does that ever work? I don't know. Some guy's got no game, I guess. Some guy's got no game, man. Apparently Fritz has all the game because he, he did some convincing that she went in that garbage can with him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it also uh, – we should mention that there's no humans in this movie. No. There's no human. It's all animals. The only closest thing you got to human is towards the end when they got the candles burning and the candles are sitting in human skulls. Yeah, I, yeah this is true with the anarchists. The, yeah, but there's no humans in it, so it's, it, you know, I, th- I think uh, uh, cartoons like South Park and whatnot, you know, for as much as they try to be edgy and whatnot, they owe a lot to uh, Fritz the Cat for breaking that kind of ground. 
Yeah, I mean, there was some places, and uh, I, I respect them for for the silly and for the serious. It's, it's a nice, it's a nice blend of both. But um, yeah. I'm gonna kick it to you again and ask you, uh, what would you give it one out of ten? Out of ten, I, you know, I had to give it about a seven point five. Doesn't quite hit an eight. But uh, I think I've been uh, ruined for animation of just seeing so much pretty animation and clean and clear that that was a drawback a little bit for me as much as it, it, it was perfect for this kind of movie. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The, the, the more raw kind of edgier kind of animation. But it also kind of was, you know, a little bit hard to kind of watch. You know, it's, it's good to revisit once every, but, you know, five to ten years or whatnot. But I couldn't uh, I couldn't watch it all the time. But. I still love it. So, you know, there it is. Yeah, I got to give you a seven and a half, too. I mean, I mean I'm going to agree with you, but I'm looking forward to someday somebody taking these films and putting them on Blu-ray because I'd love to see uh, um, a remaster from its film uh, film elements. I know Bakshi's up there in age. Uh, he's like 81 right now, I think, currently. But um, I would love to see a cleaned-up version of Fritz the Cat. You know, still, still filthy, obviously. But... Uh, just to see, as much as possible, right? <laughs> yeah, just to see, you know, more, more the 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 animation elements that I missed, you know, because I'm sure there's something that would that would benefit a better print of this movie, you know. Yes. And there's a lot, a lot of stuff I probably didn't see, but it's it's great. It's it's a uh, yeah. I think you guys should check it out. Like I said, it's on Prime. I'm not sure which cut is on Prime. I'm sure it has a couple of cuts, probably an X-rated cut, and probably a, the the. Uh, the you know maybe slightly slightly neutered R-rated cut who knows but you did see Animal Dong in this version so it might be the full on version so you know I don't remember anything like the, the from what I had when I had seen it when I was younger I don't recall anything being missing okay. you know it didn't, it didn't feel like a, a cut version but uh yeah that's it for this one you guys hope we guys hope you already enjoyed this uh this piece of quarantine gold. I think uh, the next one we're going to do is uh, take a dive into an anthology film, which I think is underrated. I think Cameron's coming back for that one, uh, being Dead yeah. Time Stories from 1986. So look for that uh, for our next quarantine short here. Um, <laughs> thanks again, and I always remember at the Send Beef Podcast, if you got beef, we've got the grinder. See you next time.